Welcome, my dear viewers, thank you for being with my channel and watching my videos, I'm telling you a story from my life, watch this video to the end, you will understand what I'm telling you, so as not to miss my new videos. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your explanations in the comments then let's go. You need to get out of that wheelchair quickly, or you might get hurt. I could hear Tyler's happy voice behind me as I desperately tried to stop the wheelchair from speeding up. I pulled up the brakes as hard as I could with my hands. Tyler was someone who didn't care much about money, but we were supposed to be celebrating our love that day. As I struggled with the out-of-control wheelchair, I felt more angry than sad. Suddenly, something got caught, and I was thrown out of the wheelchair. There was a loud noise, and I blacked out. The next day, I woke up in a hospital room. Tyler was crying on the next bed. After a while, he noticed me and started talking, trying to sound comforting. Are you okay, Amy? I'm glad, he said with a forced smile. Then he started talking about how he got hit by a car and lost his leg. He became more emotional and showed me his amputated leg under the blanket. Hey, you're going to help me, right? We're married, aren't we? He said, expecting me to agree. But I refused. Tyler was shocked. Who's going to help me then? He asked. I decided to share my thoughts. I told him about myself, that I'm Amy Moore, a 45-year-old illustrator who used to love being active. I even competed in national swimming competitions when I was younger. But about two years ago, I got a disease that made my left leg weak. Now, I can't walk without a wheelchair. I explained how Tyler and I met at a group date and fell in love. We got married after dating for three years. We were happy until I became disabled. That's when Tyler's attitude changed. He started demanding money from my family to make our home accessible and to hire a helper. When I told him I planned to use my savings for that, he got upset, worrying that it would affect his inheritance. Tyler tried to apologize and backtrack, saying he thought we would need a lot of money from now on, but I saw through his excuses. I didn't trust Tyler's excuses. He seemed obsessed with keeping our money intact. Despite my doubts, I tried to convince myself that it was just his usual stinginess. Tyler kept bringing up inheritance and insurance. His excuses turned into suggestions like upgrading our insurance policy. I couldn't understand why he was so fixated on money. In the end, despite Tyler's protests, I decided to use my savings and bonus to make our home wheelchair accessible. I also hired a housekeeping service three times a week to help with chores. The woman in charge was kind, and I enjoyed chatting with her during breaks. But Tyler seemed to dislike her. He nitpicked everything she did, from folding laundry to washing dishes. His complaints annoyed me, and one day, I exploded in anger. Tyler's response shocked me. He said he deducted the amount we paid the housekeeper from our living expenses. That meant I'd have to cover the extra cost, as Tyler planned to keep that money for himself. I was stunned. Our living expenses were already tight, and tripling my contribution wasn't feasible. Tyler didn't seem to care. He thought since I was earning, I should foot the bill. But my income wasn't enough to cover such a huge increase in expenses. However, Tyler didn't show any signs of backing down. He agreed, but asked me to make sure to save that extra thousand dollars properly. With Tyler agreeing so cheerfully, I couldn't shake off the anxiety building inside me. And unfortunately, my worries soon came true. Tyler stopped griping about the housekeeping agency, but in turn he stopped helping with any chores around the house. I tried to remind him that we still needed to pitch in with daily chores, even though we hired help. But Tyler brushed it off, saying that since we were paying for it, they should do everything. He started spending more time away from home, barely talking to me when we did cross paths, wearing a disgusted expression on his face. Thoughts of divorce crept into my mind. Then out of the blue, Tyler suggested we go see the cherry blossoms at the botanical garden. It was a surprising invitation after two months of minimal interaction. His cheerful demeanor during our outing momentarily eased my troubled heart. 
Maybe our recent problems stemmed from not talking enough, I thought optimistically. But as we strolled, Tyler dropped a bombshell. He confessed that he was out of money and needed my insurance payout urgently. Confused and alarmed, I panicked when I realized he was pushing my wheelchair downhill without my control. Desperately, I tried to stop the speeding wheelchair, but Tyler's voice echoed merrily behind me, warning me of the danger. Despite my efforts to hit the brakes, the wheelchair hit an obstacle, throwing me off, and I lost consciousness. When I woke up the next day, when I woke up, I found myself in a hospital room. Tyler was beside me on the next bed, crying. After noticing I was awake, he spoke to me with a pleading smile. Amy, you're safe. I'm glad. I was hit by a car. My leg, my leg. Tyler became increasingly emotional and uncovered himself, revealing that he only had one leg. You'll help me, right? We're husband and wife, aren't we? I refuse, I replied firmly. Tyler was stunned. He never expected me to refuse. Speechless, he stared at me. Why would I help someone who pushed me down a hill just to get insurance money? It was a moment of madness. I regret it. Saying sorry won't fix everything. If you were supposed to save $1,000 a month for me, what happened to that? I am doing that, Tyler stammered. Oh, really? Then you can pay for this hospital stay with that money. Tyler panicked because his bank account was almost empty. I knew this because I managed our finances and kept track of our bank accounts. I discovered that instead of saving money, Tyler was sending it to another woman. I hired a detective and found out Tyler had cheated on me and had a child with his affair partner. The money was going to his affair partner as child support for his kid, four years old. Cute age, huh? Have you been visiting her? How long have you known? A month now, I revealed. Tyler was shocked. Then I dropped another bomb on him. Really? I was shocked because you're paying child support for someone else's child. Tyler looked confused because he believed the child was his own. I couldn't help but laugh. What the hell are you talking about? That kid is truly mine, Tyler said angrily. Hearing this, I burst out laughing even more. Tyler looked at me as if I was something creepy. So, I decided to reveal the truth to him. You see, you can't even have children, I said laughing at his bewildered expression. Since we met, you really thought I was the reason we couldn't have kids. Well, I was considerate and didn't tell you, but your father knows. It's a lie, Tyler said, his face drained of color. In reality, we had been trying infertility treatments for about three years since we got married. Tyler reluctantly took the test, and it turned out the issue was with him. But after discussing with my father-in-law, we decided not to tell Tyler. My father-in-law believed Tyler, who was emotionally fragile, wouldn't handle the news well. After explaining all this, Tyler suddenly called someone on his phone. Hey, you had an affair, didn't you? The kid isn't mine, is it? Tyler yelled into the phone. I realized he was talking to his affair partner. They argued back and forth, but it seemed Tyler was getting nowhere. At that moment, I couldn't help but laugh when I heard Tyler accuse her of having an affair too. Ignoring Tyler's heated conversation, I brought the discussion back to us. Remember signing the papers when we decided to save that $1,000 you spent? I asked... Tyler seemed dismissive, but I sighed, knowing he probably planned to backtrack anyway. I showed him a photo on my phone. It's written here that in the event of misuse, divorce, and the entire amount spent up to the discovered month will be paid to the wife, Amy. It's properly checked, and there's a signature too, right? It's even notarized. Tyler looked frustrated, then turned to me with desperate eyes. Please, Amy, I was just possessed. Please don't say divorce, okay? Besides, I can't pay such a large amount. Divorce is settled. I can't do it anymore. But don't worry, you can pay the spent amount in installments. Seeing him like that, with a face like he was the victim, I couldn't help but feel a mix of emotions. 
I sighed and called out to the figure hiding at the entrance of the hospital room. Please come in, Dad. As his father-in-law entered, Tyler shouted. But his father-in-law's face was red with anger. This is the end of our relationship. What are you talking about? Tyler asked, confused. His father-in-law came over to me, apologizing. I'm truly sorry. I won't ask for forgiveness, and it's fine if you don't. Please file a complaint. I'm just glad Amy is safe. Thank you. I could see tears streaming down his face, and I glared at Tyler, knowing he was the reason for making my beloved father-in-law feel this way. Don't you feel anything seeing this? It's your fault. Always spending money, earning more than me, and your rich family is stingy. I don't know why I married you. So you were after the money too. I said feeling like all our beautiful memories had been tainted. My voice was the lowest it had ever been. Tyler looked surprised, and I forced a smile. Marrying for money, and then having to pay it back in the end. Huh. Shut up. I'm not paying. Too bad. Payment is a done deal, my father-in-law said sternly to Tyler, who went pale and started shaking. Just then, a middle-aged doctor in a white coat entered, interrupting the tense atmosphere. He handed me a document. Is there a reason you're not receiving treatment for your leg? He asked. Confused, I looked at Tyler, who avoided my gaze. If you have surgery on your leg, you'll be able to move again. Didn't you hear that when you were diagnosed before? The doctor continued. I didn't hear, I said, looking at Tyler, who remained silent. Realizing something was wrong, I turned to the doctor. Could you please tell me the diagnosis directly? I didn't hear it at the time. The doctor explained that my illness was temporary paralysis caused by a herniated disc. And with rehabilitation, I would be able to walk again. Tears welled up in my eyes. I had trusted Tyler's lies about my condition, but now I knew the truth. There's not a shred of affection left. Tyler, what's going on? Say something. My father-in-law yelled, but Tyler just cried, overwhelmed by everything. And in that moment, I realized that if I were free from Tyler, I could truly roam the world again. I'm always left behind. If she's in a wheelchair, she will always stay home and won't have more fun than me, right? So what? Your selfish jealousy has forced me to live in a wheelchair for two years, knowing I could have surgery to eliminate the pain and paralysis, and you kept silent. That's the worst. At my words, Tyler hangs his head in exhaustion. I look at him with cold eyes, and both the doctor and my father-in-law seem angry at Tyler for selfishly denying me my chance for treatment. So, Amy, may I explain the surgery to you tomorrow? The doctor asks. Yes, please do, I say, instantly brightening up. The doctor smiles back warmly, giving me hope for a bright future ahead. I will instruct the nurse to separate the rooms, the doctor says. No, I don't want to be separated from Amy, Tyler loudly refuses. But the doctor ignores him and leaves the room. Amy... You're not really going to divorce me, right? I'm an amputee, remember? I know I was wrong to keep quiet, but think about our current situation, Tyler pleads. Despite my father-in-law yelling at Tyler for his selfishness, he stands his ground. After about 10 minutes of silence, I reluctantly speak up. Then I'm going to work, and you'll handle the chores. If you ask for a service, you'll pay for it. Oh, and I'll deduct that amount from the living expenses. Tyler protests, saying he can't live like that, but I point out that's exactly what he said to me. Finally noticing, Tyler's face turns pale as he freezes in place. Realizing the gravity of his words, my father-in-law's face also turns pale. It must have been a shock to learn that his son had said such terrible things to his wife. Well, let's talk through lawyers from now on, and about the compensation, too. I say, ready to move forward. Wait. Amy. Tyler calls out as a nurse comes into the room. It seems I'm moving rooms so Tyler can't easily barge in anymore. Tyler resists to the end, screaming as I leave the room. 
his cries fading as the door closes behind me. After being pushed out of the room by the nurse, I met my father-in-law's eyes, and we exchanged nods. That was the last time I saw Tyler. A few months later, I received divorce papers from him through a lawyer, and the divorce was successfully finalized. I heard that Tyler was quite disheartened and is now living under the strict supervision of my father-in-law. Although he managed to keep his clerical job, it seems that news of the divorce leaked and his colleagues, who were initially concerned about his injury, now look at him coldly. Tyler brought this upon himself, but I heard him lamenting about being harassed by his colleagues. I couldn't help but bitterly smile, realizing he hasn't changed a bit. Despite the divorce, I still meet my father-in-law occasionally. Initially, he seemed apologetic, but recently he's getting back to his usual self. Upon investigation, it was revealed that Tyler's affair partner was married and had been married to the real father of her child. I sent evidence of the affair and child support transfers to her husband, which caused a huge dispute and eventually led to their divorce. Although I received a resentful letter at the lawyer's office, I ignored it. Meanwhile, I underwent surgery immediately after the divorce and spent about six months in the hospital for physical therapy. Thanks to my father-in-law's arrangements, I could continue working while staying in a private room. After being discharged, ongoing physical therapy and regular checkups helped me regain mobility, and now I can walk with a cane. Recently, I've been taking walks around the house. I even exchanged contact information with someone I met during these walks and promised to go for a meal. He's a very kind person who helped me when I stumbled and fell over a rock. These days, the exhilarating feeling of a new spring fills me with excitement, and I feel unstoppable. <laughs>